Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Shireen Bhan. The top story tonight, it is day seven of the 21-day nationwide lockdown and the number of coronavirus cases in India has risen to over 1,250. The total number of active cases stands at above 1,100. Two new recoveries have been recorded in the last 24 hours, taking that number to 101. The death toll stands at 32. Among states, Kerala and Maharashtra continue to report the highest number of confirmed cases. The combined tally for these two states now stands above 200. Jharkhand has reported its first case of COVID-19. The health ministry says over 42,000 samples have been tested for symptoms so far. Over 4,300 samples were tested yesterday. The government has also stepped up the involvement of private labs. The health ministry says that 130 ICMR labs are now functional and 49 private labs have also been approved to conduct tests. 399 patients were tested in private labs on Monday. That's not all the centre says. It is continuously identifying emerging hotspots of COVID-19 and employing rigorous cluster containment strategy. This includes the deployment of special teams to conduct house-to-house -house search for suspected patients. Meanwhile, as the number of patients rises, state governments are taking several measures to mobilize resources. In Maharashtra, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre, all other ministers and public representatives will take a pay cut of 60% for March. In Telangana, Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao, his entire cabinet and public representatives are taking a 75% pay cut. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has directed the center to ensure that migrant workers living in shelters are provided with basic necessities and medical facilities. Further, that the top court has advised engaging with religious leaders to counsel migrant workers. The government has gone on record saying that as of 11 o'clock this morning, all migrant workers who are heading to their hometowns have been moved to the nearest available shelter and no one is on the roads anymore. It says shelter has been provided to 6.63 lakh people and that over 22 lakh people have been provided with food packets so far. अभी तक हम लोगों ने 42,788 सैंपल्स टेस्ट किए हैं। कल 4,346 यानी 4,346 सैंपल्स टेस्ट हुए, विच रिप्रेजेंट्स 36 परसेंट ऑफ आवर कैपेसिटी। अभी इस वक्त 130 लैब्स फंक्शनल हो चुके हैं। Private private labs में 49 labs को permission दे चुके हैं और कल private labs में 399 patients की जांच हो चुकी है. The criteria is as and when we get a case in a particular location for us it is as big as a hotspot and we have a cluster containment strategy we have a containment approach there we do the contact tracing we also identify the containment zone. We identify the buffer zone wherein special teams do house-to-house -house search in terms of identifying cases related with severe acute respiratory illness and influenza-like illnesses and organize treatment into the identified containment zone. As far as the issue with respect to ki hume kaha par safalta mili hai, I can assure you wherever cases are there, all these cases states are forming special teams and taking required actions. Delhi's Nizamuddin area has become a hotspot for COVID-19 and has been cordoned off. This after over 200 people who attended a religious gathering in the area between the 1st and the 15th of March showed symptoms of COVID-19. 24 have tested positive for the virus. Thousands of people had attended the gathering from across the country. Over 15 of these attendees have since died from the virus. The Delhi government says that of the 25 cases reported on Monday, 18 were those who attended the gathering. Many are still untraceable and state governments of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, UP and Telangana are actively trying to track them down. The police have registered a case against the members of the Tabliki Jamaat which organized the event. Markaz me bataya jata hai ki 12-13 March ke aspas desh videsh se bohat sare loge kathe huye kisi dharmik function ke liye. उस धार्मिक फंक्शन के बाद कई लोग चले गए और काफी लोग रुक गए। 24 लोग पॉजिटिव केसेस मिले हैं। उनमें 441 लोग ऐसे हैं। अभी तक 1548 लोगों को मरकज से निकाला जा चुका है। उन 1548 में से 441 सिम्टोमेटिक थे। उन 441 को हॉस्पिटलों में पहुंचा दिया गया है। उनके सबके टेस्ट्स हो रहे हैं। इसके अलावा 1107 केसेस 
उनको क्वारंटाइन के लिए भेज दिया गया इनमें सिम्टम्स नहीं थे इनको क्वारंटाइन के लिए भेज दिया गया Well, that is the Delhi Chief Minister on uh, the Nizamuddin hotspot, uh, where 24 have now tested positive. Now, the government has announced a business-as-usual borrowing calendar for FY21. As CNBC TV18 reported, the government has said it will borrow 62% of the total borrowing in the first half of the year. Also, the centre has given itself a larger overdraft facility with the RBI. In fact, that is the key headline. Lata joins us now with her take on the government's borrowing plan. Lata, 62% to be borrowed in the first half of FY21, but... Uh, it's that overdraft facility that's the key. Well, the government has announced a business as usual borrowing uh, program saying that it will borrow, as it had said in the budget, 7.88 lakh crore through the year, of which the first half they will borrow 62%, which is uh, 4.88 lakh crore. Well, the point is this borrowing program will succeed provided they get the uh, taxes budgeted and provided expenditure doesn't overshoot. The month of March is a washout in April as well. When there's no economic activity, you can't collect any taxes. So it's a little difficult to believe that you can go ahead with only this much of borrowing. But nevertheless, uh, if you know the entire budget numbers go wrong, it is not for the DEA secretary to announce it, and certainly not announce it now. They have to wait. So we have to assume it is a business as usual year when it is not. Uh, that said, uh, the important part to note over here is there's one provision made for unusual expenses the overdraft facility the, which is called the ways and means advances uh, last year the R, the government could borrow from rbi an overdraft of 75000 crore this year they have given themselves more room they're going to borrow 1.2 lakh crore if needed uh, that is if you know they want to postpone an auction or things like that uh, another important part is they have said that they will do 2.37 lakh crore of switches and buybacks this is over and above the borrowing they will switch. Now, that much of an appetite may not be there in the market, so it looks a little ambitious. The, uh, uh, you know, the soothing part is that they are not going to issue 10 securities through the year. They will issue only seven securities. So there will be more issued of a fewer kind of securities. Of the seven, that's always good because that creates a larger market. Of the seven securities, three of them are available fully for foreigners. Both these are positives because that will create a little more appetite. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, the uh, borrowing program is largely on expected lines. Any surprises, and there will be many because this is not a, a normal year, will be announced in course of time. Uh, at the moment, uh, the market expects that the borrowing, if any, uh, uh, the borrowing in April, not if any, there will be borrowings, at least three auctions perhaps in April. That will be well received because there is a lot of surplus cash in the system. But the Reserve Bank may have to do some uh, open market uh, purchases merely to keep the confidence of the market going. Well, if you go through the entire uh, scheme of things uh, to enable government to have sufficient amounts to do its cash management, uh, to meet the requirements and the government is committed to meet its requirements uh, for COVID uh, fighting COVID-19, whether on account of health issues or on account of protecting the economy and also providing the necessary stimulus at any point of time. Uh, the entire borrowing pr program has been designed in that, that fashion. Well, that's the Economic Affairs Secretary there on the government's borrowing calendar. Now, this is the one that has been speculated on, but it is official. The government has bowed to pressure from banks and it's cut interest rates on small savings by a whopping 70 to 140 basis points for the April to June quarter. So a host of saving instruments like the National Savings Certificate and the PPF will earn lower interest rates in the first quarter of FI21. Sapna Das joins us now with the details. Sapna, take us through the various cuts and what this means for small savers. Also, uh, you know, this has been after a year's pause, so the government are uh, uh, finally deciding to bite the bullet. Absolutely. In fact, if you look at most of FI20, the rates had been kept almost unchanged on small savings uh, and for reasons well known. Uh, now, the interesting point is uh, that, you know, uh, around 70 basis points to 140 basis points is what the rate cut uh, looks like for the first quarter of uh, the uh, new financial year. So very quickly, the main uh, most uh, attractive one of these is the public provident fund. 
and here the rate cut is massive 80 basis points basically uh you know on most of the schemes the rate cut has been above 1% and these are also the long tenor schemes which uh, generally do not invite such a deep rate cut possibly uh, you know a lot has been spoken in the last one and a half years about transmission of interest rates how small savings create an issue on that front uh, you know rbi has been cutting rates uh, almost uh, continuously in the last few months and the deepest rate cut has come on friday 75 basis points so when everything is going down in terms of interest rates i suppose somewhere uh, a correction on the small savings rates has also been done uh, look at your nsc 7.9% was the earlier rate at 6.8 now public provident fund earlier 7.9 at 7.1 uh, your uh, five year recurring deposit 10.2 earlier 5.8 now Five five year time deposit seven point seven earlier six point seven so it's also a message in terms of your fixed deposits over there. Uh, Kisan Vikas Patel seven point six percent earlier six point nine. Uh, I mean this is an unprecedented rate cut on small savings if I can say this. In the last uh, almost three to four years we haven't seen this kind of a, a rate revision on small savings. And uh, you know interestingly enough uh, I had I had thought that the senior citizen scheme. and the uh, and the girl child scheme may not uh, be part of this but there too the rate cut has happened senior citizen scheme uh, the rate cut is almost 120 basis points and on the girl child scheme it is 80 basis points so i suppose this is how it's going to be in the first quarter yeah. of the of the new financial year all right sapna thanks very much uh, that's the uh, the new rates flashing on your screens uh, bad news for small savers but uh, perhaps good news for borrowers we will have to see whether this means improved transmission we are going to head into a break but coming up next the bombay high court restrains idbi trusteeship and ubs bank from selling future retails pledged shares citing equity market collapse due to covid will this set a precedent that and more when we get back एक लड़का उसको छोड़िए उसकी बड़ी बहन जिसका गुस्सा ताबड़ तोड़ है और पड़ोसियों के बच्चे जो सारे के सारे डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू पहलवान और नंदू इस घर का एक लौता इंसान जिसके दिल में मोहब्बत है अब ऐसे परिवार को क्या कहें यही के शुक्र है आपने सेंचुरी प्लाई चुना सेंचुरी प्लाई सब सहे मस्त रहे वसुधैव कुटुंबकम सारे दुनिया एक परिवार की सीख जहाँ से आई है उस भारत ने आज फिर अपनी एकता दिखलाई है उन हाथों में सबका जीवन है दिखते जिसपे दस्ताने हैं खुद के लिए ना डरते वो निकले जो सबको बचाने हैं छोटी छोटी सी बातों की अहमियत समझाई है कितने लोगों ने आज फिर कितनी जिंदगिया बचाई हैं कोरोना हारेगा इंडिया जीतेगा नेटवर्क 18 ब्रिंग्स यू द बिगेस्ट स्टोरी ऑफ आवर टाइम्स द वॉर ऑन कोरोना 1200 रिपोर्टर्स 20 चैनल्स 15 लैंग्वेजेस वी स्टे आउट सो दैट यू कैन स्टे होम थैंक यू टू आवर 10 क्रोर व्यूअर्स डेली द नेटवर्क 18 ग्रुप इंडियाज लार्जेस्ट मीडिया नेटवर्क Over 7 crore viewers tuned in daily to India's largest news network comprising 20 channels in 15 languages spread across 26 states News 18 network India's largest news network Gear up to go inside the C suite inside the boardroom and into the minds of economists market experts and in their finest business leaders capitalize on strategies shaping corporate india bazaar corporate radar at these times only on cnbc tv 18 and cnbc tv 18.com brought to you by bajaj finserve think it done Congratulations Rahul thank you aaj se ye chair 
तुम्हारी इट्स एन ऑनर सर बट सर इतनी बड़ी जिम्मेदारी पता नहीं स्टाफ मुझे पसंद करेगा कि नहीं तुम उनका ख्याल रखोगे ना राहुल तो वो तुम्हारा और कंपनी का ख्याल रखेंगे हेयर्स अ गुड वे टू शो यू केयर एल आई सी पेंशन एंड ग्रुप की पेंशन ग्रेचुटी और रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट आसानी से मैनेज करता है मतलब इम्प्लॉयज खुश तो कंपनी भी खुश You're watching India Business Hour, and let's continue with the top stories tonight. A quick check of the market action. Benchmark indices bouncing back in trade today on the back of the Sensex and the Nifty, which lost over 24%. That's for the week, the biggest loss since FI09. In absolute terms, the market has posted its biggest decline in a fiscal year ever. Interestingly, this is the first time since 2004 that the market has registered a fall for. Three straight months at the beginning of a calendar year. So that is the picture as far as uh, uh, as the calendar year is concerned. But for today, the markets closed in positive territory. Nigel joins us now to give us a lowdown of what has been a forgettable year for the Lal Street. Nigel, it's curtains on FI20. Wrap up the action on the Lal Street. Well, that's right. It was a forgettable fiscal year. The Nifty lost close around 26 percent odd, and the previous worst close that we had was all the way. in FI09 but talking about FI09 FI10 did see a sharp bounce back so an optimistic note let's hope let's hope that FI21 is uh, you know at least a bit of a pull back here but let's take you through all the moves in the past year itself now the total market capitalization that was eroded was nearly around 38 lakh crore rupees and in terms of moves in the last few fiscals well um, this was only the second year that we had a negative close in a particular fiscal out of the last eight so that's a data point that should come up for you on the screen as uh, well in terms of uh, what was moving last year well the nifty was under pressure the nifty bank was under more pressure and the breadth of the market did see big big selling so the mid cap and the small cap indices were under performers and in terms of the nifty there were plenty of losers and selling across the board indusind bank was down close to around 80% you have auto stock in there ferris and non ferris stocks as well did see selling in the past fiscal the top 10 losers come up for you on the screen and they have lost close to around 50% of its market capitalization the problem was that the large stocks five of them come up for you on the screen and in fact they have nearly around 30% weight on the index and all of them were down anything between 17 to around 42% odd but it was an all gloom and doom Select stocks did well. Consumption theme did play out. A couple of pharma names as well did do well. So Nestle came into the Nifty, gave you near 50% returns. Bharti Airtel, 40% plus returns on hopes of a duopoly market, and HUL as well. The stock continues to remain expensive and gave you big, big returns. But from the broader markets, there was a lot of pains. You know, bank stocks did see selling. NCC was under pressure in the past year. So a couple of big, big losers up for you on the screen. But let's wind this down with a couple of gainers. You had Berger Paints that did well. You had IGL as well that give you big, big returns, and Granules as well. So some green on the screen, but otherwise the fiscal year was a forgettable one. But what history suggests is that after you have a forgettable fiscal in terms of returns on the Nifty, just maybe that could be a better FY21 in the waiting. Back to you. Well, that certainly is the hope, Nigel, that FI21 will be better than the year gone by. I appreciate you joining us. Here's the Chinese economic data that I was referring to a while back. China's purchasing manager index for March has come in at 52. This number beats expectations for an economy hit by the coronavirus pandemic. This index had hit a record low of 35.7 in the month of February. The data indicated that production, new orders, and employment had all expanded. However, the Chinese bureau said that this does not mean that China's economic activity has returned. to normal levels and back home our own core data india's eight core industries grew at 5.5% in february the fastest in 11 months coal electricity cement and refinery products have seen a sharp surge in output The government has slashed natural gas price for the period of April to September by 26%. The oil ministry says the bulk of India's existing gas production for the next 6 months will be priced at 2.39 dollars per unit. The second price cut in 6 months brings natural gas price to its lowest level since 2014. government extends a deadline for submission of bids for BPCL by more than a month. Interested bidders can now submit expressions of interest by the 13th of June.
in a big legal battle which could set a precedent for all cases related to the invocation of pledge shares during the COVID-19 situation, the Bombay High Court has restrained IDBI trusteeship and UBS Bank from selling future retail shares pledged against loan. This is the first case in which a court has cited unusual market fall due to the coronavirus issue and granted interim relief to future group. Nisha joins us now with more on this and what kind of a precedent this could set. Nisha. It's definitely a big relief coming in for future group and in particular future retail. But then remember, it's in terrim in nature. Bombay High Court in its judgment has said that it has restrained um, both the lenders, IDBI trusteeship, as well as UBS Bank from invoking the shares of future retail and uh, from selling those shares, citing unprecedented market conditions due to COVID-19 situation. Now, remember, this particular case is going to set a precedent for many such cases, and therefore, it gains so much importance at this point. This is the first ever case where a court of law has acknowledged the impact of coronavirus crisis in the country and its business impact. It said that the interim relief needs to be given to future group. Future group lawyers had stated that there was no default on the loans taken by the group in normal circumstances. And uh, these uh, times are unprecedented because of coronavirus. While on the other hand, the lenders, IDBI, trusteeship, as well as UBS, have their point of view in terms of their right over the con contractual agreement. And we hear from sources with direct knowledge that these lenders are likely to appeal against the Bombay High Court order. Bombay High Court is likely to hear this matter again on 4th of May. Till then, if the appeal is not there, there is an interim relief. What really happened in this situation and can be the common case for many other companies with investors and lenders is that the margin cover had and the value of it had gone below the minimum level required as per the contractual agreements and therefore gave the right to these lenders to invoke the pledge shares of future retail, which was given by future group in lieu of the loan and debentures. Now, in many other cases, this may just happen. So this particular case is going to be extremely important in setting a precedent for many such cases and also for the force majeure clause being invoked by the companies. All right, Nisha, many thanks for joining us. Will this set a precedent? Uh, it certainly could. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of India Business Hour. Thanks very much for watching. Do stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news will continue. Co-powered by Century Plight.